Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I'm stamping with Cake Soiree stamp set and I will demonstrate this simple way to achieve masking in a handmade card project. My first piece of advice is to choose an image that has a matching framelit die. That way you'll save on fussy cutting time. The principle in masking is that you have an image that is stamped onto paper and you'll be covering that image with a mask that fits over it precisely, thus the term masking. I'm not sure exactly where this came from and there's lots of different ways to do masking. The easiest way that I know is to use a sticky note and do the stamping on the sticky note. Once it's cut out, place that directly on top of your stamped image and then start stamping the images that will go in the background. Once the images of the background are stamped and they should overlap that sticky note, then you'll see by removing the front pieces that you have your original images right there in the front. One tip to remember in masking is it's great to have your colors different between the unmasked images that are stamped and the masked images. They don't have to be terribly different from one another as today I have used two different stamp colors that are in the same family but are not identical. This will allow me to differentiate the front three flowers that are smaller it's a different spiral design and they have a different color. I'm also not muddling the color as much because I want them to be more distinct and make it easier for you to tell that they've been masked. Another technique to add to a simple card making project is a watercolor wash. I've used a silicone mat and dabbed on a light blue and a light green ink directly from my stamp pads. By adding a little bit of water from the aqua painter, then I can mix these two colors together where they meet and still be able to use the colors individually. First, I wet the paper around the image that I will be coloring and then Picking up a little bit of the ink colors, I squeeze the barrel of the aqua painter to coincide with when the aqua painter's brush meets the paper. I know that sounds very technical, but what I'm trying to achieve is to pick up the color and then allow the water to exit the water brush and take the ink with it. That is going to dilute that stamp ink and it's going to come out in an easy way and it looks natural. So many of you have emailed me and asked me to expound more on watercolor washes. So this is incorporated in with the masking technique because this is an easy way for you to learn to do the watercolor wash as well. It can be a little bit daunting to get the natural look that you're after. But my number one thing that I remember and that I can pass on to you all is to squeeze the barrel of the water brush. That pushes out water and it pushes out the stamps ink at the same time. Keep trying until you get the look that you desire. Another form of masking is to use a piece of paper and, and right here I've got the leftover sticky note and cover up an image and then stamp over the paper in the image. Then pull that paper away and you can see that it only stamped out where the stamp and the ink made contact with the paper. I'm using a, some tear and tape to adhere this watercolor paper, paper down to a piece of cardstock because 
once you add this much water, it can be a little warped or bumpy. So I'm trying to get as much firm contact with the paper, the two different papers as I can. I'm going to add a piece of ribbon around this and I don't find it necessary to put the ribbon all the way through around the panel. Instead I've just done a little trick where I adhere it down to each side and I'm putting a simple bow on the front. The bow is not necessary but I feel that the bow in the project is going to give just a little bit more texture to a pretty much one layer card. I'll add some clear and glitter epoxy shapes in the little dewdrop and the little circles around the project as that will give me some sparkly glitter to catch the eye and move the eye around. Here is the inside of the card and perhaps my favorite part of this project. I like the way this stamp worked out to where I could get a faded out or an ombre look. That might turn up in another project sometime. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. All the products that I've used today are listed down below in the video description. For more information, visit me at my blog at JennyStampsUp.com. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!